Oh, let's yoga. Okay, so I'm gonna find out when Tony is on. Um, I'm really excited that you guys are joining. Tony and I have never done yoga together before. So this is a brand new moment in our relationship. Um, let's see, are you on? Are you on? I wanna see if he sent a request. Um, I, we're gonna do a lot of what we usually do on here. If you're new to this yoga practice with me, don't worry. It's super beginner's yoga. Oh, Tony, how do I join? <laughs> um, Tony, so you have to request to join. You send a request. Hmm, how do I tell you how to do that? So, oh my gosh, so many people. Yeah, you haven't requested yet. But I see that you're watching, which is really nice. I also see that Katie Greenthal is watching and Colleen. Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> um, he, somebody said you could go back out and come back in, but Tony, just request um, to join. I wonder if somebody could call you and tell you Nope, you haven't requested yet. I wonder if I could request you. I'll just request, maybe I was. I've never done that before. Hi, There Jimmy. we go. <laughs> I was literally in a total panic. <laughs> and I've done Instagram Live with you before, so but I don't know why I'm such a technical idiot. Look, I want you to know that I am doing this on my iPad. I normally do it on my, on my phone, but I was like, can you just see him? I know, wait, I'm on my phone. Okay. Is this all right? Yeah, it's great. You're perfect. As I'm gonna back up. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, we're doing yoga together, gosh. Yeah. Who'd have thought? We used to do yoga together on set, but that was different. That was scripted. That's true. <laughs> um, are you, you know what? We should both grab a chair. Can you grab a chair? I'll grab a chair quick. Yeah, like a chair yeah. to do yoga with or what? What? A chair. To like yeah, to do practice for modifications. Cool. Yeah, I have one. You tell everybody how you've been taking yoga while I grab my chair. Okay. So Carrie's going to grab a chair. Um, like for me, yo I, I'm thrilled to do this because Carrie has actually been a yoga teacher, which I've never been. Um, but I've been doing yoga on and off for a long, long time. I got out of it for years. And actually the past two, two years, uh, I've been doing it pretty steadily and, and have noticed... Um, it's really helped me. So, um, yeah, it's great. Amazing. It's really great. And how fun <laughs> to do with my your oh, wait, friend. I'm getting a call. Hold on. No, wait. Okay. I wonder if I'm doing something wrong. Hello? Am I doing something wrong? Oh, I didn't. <gasps> Can I set it up now or no? We're going to start again because we're going to do this as a fundraiser for Black Voters Matter. Oh, cool. So I'm going to log out and set up the fundraiser. Nobody go anywhere. Come right back here. Um, and I'll do that really quickly. All right. Okay. We'll rejoin. Okay. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That was so, that gave me so much anxiety. Okay. I'm so happy that, <laughs> that, that I got that call. This is a fundraiser for Black Voters Matter. Um, and I want Tony to come back in. Let's see. There we go. Oh, now, now somebody's like on it and super ready to go. He was there so quickly. There you are. Okay. Hi. <laughs> we, we call this take two in our business. We do. Oh, wait, um, my phone's falling over. <laughs> <laughs> so Black Voters Matter is an incredible organization that raises money and awareness around black communities engagement in democracy. So as we're doing yoga, donate and we'll chat later after yoga a little bit um, about how we stole an election on our show, but we, we're going to make sure that elections don't get stolen in real life. Um, so we'll chat for a minute after so you guys can continue to donate because now we just want you to do some yoga. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I love you. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for doing I this. I love you too. I'm, I'm excited. 
Okay, so sit in a way that's comfortable for you, cross-legged, crisscross Indian socks or on your knees if that's more comfortable. If you have a towel, you can grab a towel and sit on it if you'd like to elevate yourself a bit. And Tony, if you have any questions, I know you're not used to me telling you what to do, so if you have questions or concerns. Never happened. Um, just, you know, shout out. Your question might be somebody else's question as well, so don't be Good, sure. I'll, I'll jump in, yeah. Okay, so everybody bring your eyes to close. I'm smiling like a goofy teenager, because now that I'm doing this with you, I'm like, this, it's real that I'm doing this. <laughs> um, okay, so if you've been with us before, we're going to do ujjayi breathing, which is basically just in and out through your nose, so as you're listening to me, Breathe in and out, breathe into the count of, let's start with four. In on one, two, three, four, and hold it, and exhale to eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale for four, two, three, four, pause, exhale, two, Inhale for four, two, three, four, pause, exhale through your nose, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and just keep breathing as I start to talk a little bit about today's practice. Just stay with your breath, and if you want to make the counts longer, you can. If you want to stay where it is, that's fine. Just start to get in touch with the sense of your body. Start to get in touch with how you're feeling. Maybe wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Let yourself be present. Maybe you're feeling excited. Maybe you're feeling a little silly like I am right now. Maybe you're feeling grateful. Maybe you're feeling nervous. Whatever it is, just observe it and continue to stay with your breath. I was listening to a podcast that I really love called On Being, and um, Krista Tippett was interviewing Vincent Harding. Try to stay with your breath as I'm talking. Try to notice any tension in your body and just send air into those tense spaces and let them go. And Vincent Harding was talking about how in the civil rights movement, um, he had such distinct memories of singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And how singing that song was a way of staying in the movement without being reactive to what, you know, those who were fighting for white supremacy and, and the Confederacy, what, what they were fighting for. Not saying, because you did this, I'm going to do this, but saying, no matter what you do, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So I'm going to talk today about light while we're in our practice. And right now, as you're sitting here, I want you to imagine a light on the top of your head, the crown of your head, and let that light, light shine straight up. And let that grow your spine a little bit. Maybe you, maybe it impacts the way you're holding your abdominal muscles. Maybe it helps you level your chin out. If it pulls your shoulders up with it, drop your shoulders. And just let that light shine from the top of your head straight up and keep breathing. I want you to also imagine a light in your third eye. So that's this space, you know, just above your two eyes. If you want to peek for a second, open your eye, you can. It's this space right here. So imagine a light there, and that light can just be shining out. And let, let that impact your posture. So what does that feel like for you to have a light right in your third eye? And then one other place so appropriate because it's Tony with us today is just imagine a light in your heart if you need to put your hands on your heart to help find that sense you can or maybe leave your hands on your knees or in your lap but just let that light shine out in your heart today So 
we're going to move your towel if you have one that you're sitting on and just come to your back. Just try to relax into your back. Yes, it's a little different today because I'm on my iPad, so I'll just try to move around and have you guys see what you need to see. If you need to see more, let me know. But keep your feet, your knees are bent, feet flat on the floor. Keep letting that light shine up through the top of your head. Let the, height, the light shine up through your heart and let your shoulders relax into the floor. Turn your wrists, your turn your palms up to the sky and let your feet be heavy. Let the bones of your pelvis be heavy. Let them sink into the ground. Let your shoulders be heavy. Stay with your breath. The back of your head melt into the ground. Relax the space behind your eyes. And go ahead and pull your right knee into your chest. You can interlace your fingers on top of your knee and pull your knee in. And now stretch your, did I say right? I said left. Pull your left knee into your chest and stretch your right leg out. And stretch through your heel and let your hip, your, your right hip open up. So pull the left leg, reach through the right leg. Let that light continue to shine out through the top of your head. And be long. Now with that left foot, circle it in a couple of times. Try to loosen up those joints. And reverse the circle. Make sure that your shoulders are relaxed into the ground. I notice sometimes when I pull my left leg in, I think my shoulders are going to help me, but they're not. My arms can help me without my shoulders. And now take your right hand and put it on your knee and just have a gentle twist across your body. Oh, my back is cracking. And you can gaze over that left hand. And don't let your fingers be alive, right? So wiggle your fingers. Let light shine out from your heart, out across your arm, through your fingertips. As you gaze left, reach left, let this left knee be heavy across you. Keep letting light shine out through the top of your head. As you let it just sink, but it's long. Bring out those organs and come back to center. And now grab your right knee and pull it into your chest. Remember to relax your shoulders. Stretch out that left leg, reach through the heel. Pull the right leg in some more and just hug yourself. Try to think about it as not, you know, forcing, but rather hugging, inviting, hip opening. Circle that right heel, right foot. And in reverse directions. Remember to stay with your breath. Holding your breath does not help the movement. Staying with your breath helps the movement keep flowing. Use your left hand and pull that right knee across you and then twist to the other side. Stretch that right hand out. Let that light shine out your chest, across your arm. Reaching, wiggle your fingers if you need to keep them awake and alive. Let that light shine out through the top of your head. It's a twist, but it's long. Reach through your toes and the bottom. Beautiful. And come back to center. So we're going to now roll over to the right side and push ourselves up to cat and cow. So just gently push yourself up. We're going to come on all fours. And um, what we're going to do today, if you haven't been with us before, 
you're going to use your hands. Think about twisting a jar to help find the energy in the shoulders because the shoulders are coming down and around and you're really pressing into these L, this L of your hands. So let your arms be strong, shoulders are down and around, and inhale, cat, exhale, cow. Inhale, exhale. Keep your arms active, all your fingertips. Inhale. Exhale. Come to a neutral spine, and we're going to find downward dog again. So strong hands rooted into the ground. And we're just going to start by turning the toes under. You can't see me. Let me come to here. So turning the toes under. And start by not coming all the way up. What is that? You might have bird poop on my mat. That's OK. So. <laughs> So come to just initially, toes are turned out under, and lift your knees off the ground. Just keep breathing. Hold here for a count of three, four, five, and bring them down. Beautiful. We're going to do that a couple more times, and this time I want you to think about your sits bones. So your sits bones are back here, your back pocket. As you just pull your knees up, think about turning your sit bones to the side. So arms strong, pushing into the ground. Keep your abdomen active, neck long, so head is not hanging down, it's not looking forward. We kind of shine that light straight out again through the top of your head and pull your knees up. Back pockets up to the sky. Arms strong, shoulders out of your ears, coming down and around, and knees down. So we're going to go up one more time, and this time we'll push all the way back to downward dog. Yes, Tony, good? Right. Anything you know about downward dog that I'm forgetting that you want to tell people? No, I love what you're saying. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Inhale, let your heart shine, let the light shine from your head. Reach your sits bones up into the sky. Inhale, knees off the ground. And now exhale, push back through to downward dog. I feel like I need to move my mat. So you're gonna let that heart shine. Pushing through your arms, shoulders down and around. Let your neck be long. Let your sits bones reach for the sky. It's not important that your heels are on the ground. It's important that you're reaching. If you're having a hard time staying in this pose, you can pedal your feet a little. But just stay here and breathe for three more. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, strong arms, inhale. Exhale, knees down. Beautiful. So we're going to go up again. And this time I want to remind everybody of your shoulder, shoulder blades. So remember not to sink them down. You want flat shoulder blades right on the back. So that's what allows your spine to be strong. So come to set up again in neutral spine. Knees are right under your hips. Curl your toes under. Inhale, knees up, and exhale, push back into downward dog. And take your own breath here. Come down if you need to. Remember to listen to your body in this time. Push yourself past your comfort zone, but in a loving, loving way. And come on down. We're going to go up one last time. And, um, and this time at the end, we're not going to have knees come down. We're going to walk our knees to the front of the mat and continue with some standing poses. Maybe I'll turn to face you. Um, if you need to take child's pose for a couple of breaths, right now is a good moment to do that before we come up for our final downward dog. 
Hi. Hi. So hands again into the ground. Twist those jars if you need to, to get the shoulders out of your ears. Curl your toes under. Inhale and exhale straight back into downward dog. Keep the shoulder blades on your back, but your heart reaching for your shins. Sit bones up to the sky, back pockets up. Beautiful. And now if you want to use your ab muscles to pull yourself forward and walk your feet to the front of your mat. And you're going to hang over. You may need to bend your legs to do this. That's okay. You want to just come forward, bend. And when you're here, I want you to shake your head no to try to release the weight of your head to gravity. Shake your head yes. Beautiful. Sometimes I even like tap my head to try to release it. I try to tap it to, to try to get my, my skull to really hang off of that first vertebra. And then bend your legs and roll up to standing. And let's take Tadasana, so mountain pose. I have to back up again. So a lot of folks were asking for pose. Oh, it's because it's my iPad. I'm like, why does this look so strange? I'm going to try to move this table back. So be patient with me. Ah! Let's see. I think that might be better. Okay. Um, so there's been a lot of people talking about um, lower back pain, sciatica. So I'm going to do a standing pose that we've done before. If you're just dipping in and jo joining us, we are raising money for Black Voters Matter because Tony knows that Black Voters Matter. Um, and so please feel free to donate and join us. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just wondering if it's my speaker. It's a little, yeah. Yep, here you go. Okay, all right. So come to standing. Um, this pose is really good for lower back and sciatica. Um, we're gonna start actually with tree pose, which is a pose we've done before but it's going to continue into another pose that I really love um, where we get to cradle ourselves like the precious babies that we should be treating ourselves as. Um, so let's ground our feet into the floor, Tadasana. So rock back and forth to find your center, to find all four corners of the base of your feet. You wanna make sure that all of your toes are reaching out and spread on, like try to play piano with your toes on your mat to get the sense of all your toes. Your heels are apart, so your second toes are parallel. Arms reaching down, chin is parallel to the ground, your gaze is straight ahead. That light is shining from the top of your head straight out, shining out from your heart, but don't let it make you reach forward like this. Keep yourself in alignment. In alignment. Let that light shine from your third eye as well. Reaching your hands down. And we're going to roll up to the right foot so that you're on your toes. And this left foot, imagine growing roots from your left foot deep into the ground. We're going to take tree pose. So really establish those roots on your left foot. Go ahead and take your right foot and you can put it either here where your toe is touching the ground around your ankle, or you can put it here on your shin below your knee, or you can reach down and bring it all the way up here. And wherever it is, make sure that, that you are pushing into that center line. So you're keeping that pressure in the center of your body that's where the balance is by literally finding your center, 
roots or down into the ground and then put the hands where you need them. You can take this kind of quarantine arms pose that we've talked about where you can honor your personal space and your need to have personal space. If you want to reach up to the heavens, you can do that too. Keep breathing. If you want to put your hands on your heart, Anjali Mudra offering, but just keep breathing. You have your chair here. If you need a chair for balance, that's okay. If you need a wall for balance, that's okay. Knowing where and when you need help is super important in yoga and super important in life. I'm talking to myself right now. Um, so just find, meet yourself where you are. You don't have to be anywhere else. Release that leg. You can sort of bounce out and feel the different sensations between your right side and your left side. Let's go ahead and do the other side. So left foot, roll it up so that you're on your toes. And you let your right foot, your whole right leg from your hip down, down, find roots into the ground so that you can be a strong, sturdy tree. And now bring that foot to where you need it. You can have your chair if you want it. So it can be here or here, all the way up here. Again, challenge yourself, but do, do it lovingly. Be where you are. Find your center. So pushing that foot and leg against each other while you're rooting down into the ground. And again, find the arms. Find where you want the arms to be. This yoga practice is not for me. It's not for Tony. It's for you. I mean, it's for us to ourselves, but for you in your house, it should be for you. Keep breathing. If you're swaying, that's okay. Just come back. Trees do that too. This is tree pose. So it's not about being in some perfect version of the pose. It's just about kind of getting a sense of where you are and what you need. You can exhale and release that foot. Beautiful. So this is what we're going to do that's a little bit new today. Um, we're going to do, we'll go back to what foot was first. So ankle across your knee, and you really have to flex this foot. Flex the right foot. That leg has to be really active to protect your knee. Again, on the left foot, root it into the ground. If you need to hold onto a chair, that's fine. In fact, I'll bring a chair over here to show how we can do this with a chair. So you can be here. Really flex that foot, keep it active. Now your left leg roots into the ground to stay tall, and then you're gonna hinge at the hip like you're sitting in a chair. It's a really important hip opener. You're not curled over, hanging over your body. You're keeping those that light shining out through your head, shining out through your heart. Put your hands where it's most comfortable, the hips is a really great place for finding balance and you can really sink into those hips. Also, Anjali Mudra is very powerful for this pose. If you're here, press those palms together to help you find center and find balance. And keep breathing in and out through your nose. Keep that foot active. Keep those toes alive. Every cell of your body might be needed to keep this pose focused. And when you're ready, exhale and stand up. Beautiful. You can do the same thing on the other side. So left leg crosses over the foot, over the knee. Root the right leg into the ground. This foot has to be alive to protect this knee. And when you're ready, sink into this pose. Your arms can reach up. Keep breathing. Or you can be an Anjali Mudra. Keep that foot active. Keep your sits bones, back pockets reaching out in back of you. They're not reaching to the ground, curving over. The sits bones are reaching out. 
you need to hold on to something, that's fine. Keep breathing. Beautiful. One more breath here. And when you exhale, push out through your legs and up. That was so great. Okay, we're gonna do each side one more time because we have to do the cradle part. So, right leg over left knee, energy through the foot. We're only gonna take one big breath when we sink down. Sink down into that hip. Breathe, let your sits bones reach out behind you. And exhale, straighten your leg. And now hold this leg and you can cradle it. You can hold it at the ankle at the shin. If you can bring it all the way up into your arm, that's good too. So cradle like a baby. But you're just reaching toward pulling that leg toward you. And again, reach down through the standing leg. Find your roots like in tree pose and reach out through the top of your head and let the light shine out from your heart and gently hug the ankle or the shin toward you. Beautiful. And hold on to the chair if you need to. That's why it's here. I'm pushing us a little bit further today because Tony's here and I want to push him a little bit further so you can blame him. Um, come up on your toes. Ankle across your knee. Active foot. Inhale and exhale, sinking down into the pose. Put your arms where you need them. Put your hands where you need them. Inhale. And exhale. If you need to hold on, that's fine. Come on up. And then again, hold your foot where you need to. Maybe it's here at the ankle. Maybe it's here at the shin. Maybe you pull all the way up. But the key is to be strong on that standing leg. Shine the light out through the top of your head. Shine the light out through your heart. Your heart. Beautiful. And exhale. Let that foot go. That was great. We're just going to do the kind of half salute that we've been doing before we take Shavasana which is admittedly Tony's favorite pose, he told me. <laughs> Start your hands in Anjali Mudra. You can have shine your light out from your heart to your prayer. We're going to inhale, arms up, reaching up, and exhale, swan dive down. Hands to the ground, even if your knees are bent. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, reverse swan all the way up. And exhale back to Tadasana. Let's do that two more times. We're going to try to find a little bit of a flow. Inhale up. And exhale, bow forward. Let the light shine from your heart, hands to the ground. And inhale, gaze forward, reaching through. And exhale, bow down. And now inhale, reverse swan dive up. And exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. One more time. Inhale, arms up, gaze up. Know that it's your last time. Swan dive through. Let the line sh shine from your heart. Hands on the ground. And inhale, reaching forward, gazing forward. Fingertips still on the ground. Exhale, hanging down. And inhale, reverse swan dive, reaching up. Stay here for a couple of breaths, reaching up. Maybe your hands are here. Maybe they're here. Maybe you interlace your fingers here. But root your hands. Let your reach up to the sky come from the fact that you are rooted into the ground. And exhale, arms wide open. Take up lots of space as you slowly let your light shine out. This was a, this is what my daughter's teacher calls rainbow. Sometimes when they do meditation breathing, they make rainbows with their arms. Keep 
can do that any time. Okay. That was, I think, the hardest practice we've done so far. So find your mat or your rug or your floor and go ahead and take Shavasana, which means just lying down, breath pose, corpse pose. So go ahead and lie down. You want to make sure that your arms are below your shoulders. So they shouldn't be up here. They should be down here. And again, just let yourself be heavy into the ground. There we go. Let the back of your head melt into the floor. Let your palms be facing up. Let your shoulders be heavy. Let your elbows be heavy. Let your legs be heavy. Let your toes be heavy. Inhale and exhale. Relax the space behind your eyes. For a lot of us, finding time in the day to just relax and be can be a challenge. So really give this moment to yourself. Just focus on your breathing. If you're, if you're starting to think about what happens after this or what happened before this, just come back to your breathing. Come back to the physical sensation of melting into the ground like butter on a hot plate. Relax your face. Relax your lips. Relax your ears. Start to bring yourself back into the world so we can have a little conversation. So wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, maybe start to move your legs a little bit. And roll over to your right side. I have a chair in my way. And push yourself up. Gently to sitting and come back to whatever seated pose feels good for you. Crisscross apple sauce or kneeling on your knees. And I just want to say namaste. Before we leave the practice and start conversation, just remind yourself of that light that shines from your crown straight up to the heavens, that light of your thing, and that light in your heart that's always there, whether Tony and I are with you or not, it's always there. So namaste. And that means, as so many of you already know, but the light, the God, the goodness in me bows to the light, the God, the goodness in you. Which is so true to me for all of you who joined us today. It's so amazing to be able to share this space. And thank you, Tony. Thank you, Carrie. That was so great. <laughs> I, I, uh, that was really fun. And um, will you, can I, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, 
I've you I've never been a part of you teaching yoga. I remember you told me you were, you were, you know you used to teach yoga a lot. Yeah. And you're I'm not surprised, but you're a great teacher. That was really <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, so thank you for inviting me to class. I'm just sweating. See. Yay! Also, we're having a giant rainstorm. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, you. That's so coast. cool. So yeah. No, it's not that. It's like, of course, sunny and beautiful in LA. Right. So I want to remind people that we're raising money for the Black, for Black Mo Voters Matter Fund um, because we really deeply believe in democracy and in engagement and. Um, wanting people to be able to have their votes matter, know that their votes matter and then have their votes matter. So um, please, if you can donate, it's an it's like, incredible organization doing a lot of good. Um, and also a reminder, I always say this every time, Tony, like we are mm -hmm. so happy you came, but we're not real yoga teachers. <laughs> well, you act like one, I gotta say. <laughs> Well, it was many, many years ago. Such an amazing My certification actor. has expired for sure. <laughs> for decades. Um, so, if you want to take yoga from some like phenomenal real teachers, I love Chelsea Loves Yoga. Rebecca mm. Beninati is my friend for many decades and teaches online. And also, Erica Bloom teaches Pilates. Do you have a yoga teacher that you love that you could shout out? Um, I do. I can tell you some, you know, now that we're all sort of uh, locked down, there's some great online. Uh, you know, the studios, there's a great one in Venice in California called Love Yoga. Um, and they're doing streaming classes and it's only six bucks a class, I think. Um, there's a, a great one, teachers that I uh, go to in New York um, uh, uh, called uh, Z Yoga, which you can find that now do streaming classes and the, uh, the teachers, they're awesome. Um, so it's amazing. You can, you know, the one of the silver linings of um, this is you can experience a lot of things, uh, regardless of where you are geographically, and it's not expensive. So, so true. It's so true. Yeah. Um, do you guys have questions for us? Should I look and see if there are? I'm questions? looking here. I might okay. need my reading glasses. I see lots of hearts. <laughs> <Bad. laughs> I, there's one question that's super important. Why is Tony so perfect? That's your question, Carrie. <laughs> Oh, I'm supposed to answer my <laughs> No, I, I just assumed that was the question you were asking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I typed it in. Because you ask me that all the time, and I just I have do. never been able to come up with the sure. right answer. Sure. Why are you so perfect, Tony? It's the yoga. Well, judging from the picture that you posted for uh, promoting this event, like, Carrie looks like this gorgeous Zen goddess, and I look like a serial killer. Um, no, you look, oh, my gosh. <laughs> People love that picture of you. It's amazing. I, I own it. It's me. What can I say? Me with tattoos, which I don't actually have. But anyway. They painted those on you? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was for this the Netflix show that I did, Chambers, Chambers. last year. Yeah. And, um, and I played a sort of new age crazy person. But um, anyway, Dude, so tell, I'm donating to Black Voters Matter right yeah, now. Yeah, people are donating. It's so, mm -hmm. so cool. Why do you love yoga? Um, I love yoga because um it gets me out of my head and into my body yeah um and the more i do it the uh the more i, I feel like i do a deeper level and i and i come to understand my body in ways that i never had you know like i we all have certain tensions or asymmetries in our body <clears throat> in places where we store tension and like i i found there are places that i literally didn't no, I couldn't feel where I was, how I was supposed to be moving it. Yeah. You know, when you get into yoga, those things start to open up and you feel present in your body. And that, um, you know, particularly in a, it's great for our job, you know, because we do need to be in touch with our bodies and our emotions and all that. But uh, just in anybody's everyday life, it's incredible the what a stress reliever that is, particularly in, 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 in such stressful times as we're going through now. And how often do you do yoga? Somebody asked. I do it. I've been doing it like at least twice a week. Um, and then when I, you know, the past, as you know, the past year or so, I've been was doing plays. Um, and when I was doing the the past two plays I was doing, I would do it for like four times a week because I found it incredibly. Uh, helpful for me going on stage yeah 
but yeah, I try and do it two times a week, and that, that way I really keep, stay in touch with it. Somebody asked if we miss working together, um, and I would say yes. <laughs> yes, that's a yes. Yeah. I just miss doing every way. I, I don't like being, we've been so far, we're on opposite ends of the country. So yeah. uh, let me take the opportunity to tell you that I miss you. Um, I'm going to take the opportunity as usual to deflect and say, we all miss each other. <laughs> <laughs> I miss every single one of you watching this. Let me just say. It's true. And also like I, I'm actually doing a, um, a Zoom with Katie and Darby and um, Bellamy later mm -hmm. this afternoon. So it's oh, like, great. yeah, we really do. I don't know. It's, it's, it, we miss each other. We do. We, yeah. all, we do. I was looking at pictures uh, the other day. I was trying to, I don't know if you have this problem, but I, I have like my photo library is so like crazy and voluminous and disorganized. And oh. I thought I need to kind of get it. So I took a minute to do it. And I was looking at the pictures of all of us um, when we had our last get together. That was, was that in the fall? I can't even remember when we were at George's, when we all were at George's house. Oh yeah, that was. Um, it was in summer. I think it was summer. I think it was anyway. Summer. We had a, uh, an amazing time. We all had a little reunion weekend, and that was special. it was very special. This is a yeah. We're 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 a lucky group. We are. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I saw a couple other questions. I want to just give a little. We'll do like two or three more minutes so people can keep donating to the Black Voters Matter Fund. Um. Somebody asked how um, scandal was similar to the election, the last election, which is a scary question because mm. we, you know, you were very angry with me on our show for stealing the election for you. For I did me. it for you. So ungrateful. I did it for you. <laughs> um, but uh, but it was wrong. It's always wrong to steal an election, mm -hmm. and um, and and we we have to do a lot of work to make sure that voting is fair in this country right now. Um, I know we both do work with Stacey Abrams' organization, Fair Fight, um, and the Black Voters Matter Fund does a lot of work around this, but just making sure that every vote counts and that people uh, know where to go to vote and are registered to vote. Um, I feel like maybe I should do another yoga where instead of doing a fundraiser, I can have like a portal for people to register to vote. Yeah, the really registration, if you haven't registered, you, you please do it and ask your friends and your, make sure your family is because, you know, there are forces out there, um, <clears throat> particularly in swing states and stuff that are trying to make it as difficult as possible for people to exercise their right to vote. And um, it's right. been happening, look, the, <laughs> in the civil rights movement in the 60s that people were, you know, dying to um, try and exercise their right to vote. And, uh, and those, um, you know, there's a reason that people don't want everyone to vote. And uh, it is, you're right, and I've, you know, it's our responsibility. And we, we, can, we can create outcomes, you know, but we have to get involved. So I'm sure everybody here listening is, you know, we're preaching to the choir, but um, uh, anybody that you know who hasn't or your kids or your, you know, people get cynical and think they can't make a difference, but um, we can and we have to. Yeah. And I think also people to, to really understand that it's not just about voting for president, that voting is important because we're voting for DAs and we're voting for sheriffs and we're voting for judges. So if, if, if what you care about is Black Lives Mattering or reforming police departments, um, reallocating police funds into education or community resources, if what you care about is education, mm -hmm. if what you care about is health care, like this is about showing up not just to vote for president, but to vote for your own leaders in your community, mayors, sheriffs, judges, DAs. Um, those elections are so important. And that like, that's really, really how you make a difference in your community. They really are almost, I mean, certainly we're in a critical presidential election cycle now, but, you know, which is an existential issue for this country. But the down, what, they, what you just described, what we call down ballot, yeah. you know, v voting. And um, that's the stuff that just makes all the difference in terms of what's going to happen in your community. Huge. Huge. You know, like you and I did the, um, the last Instagram live, I think, that we did yeah. was about taking the census. 
Yes. Uh, which if people haven't done yet, you still have time to do it. It's been extended and it's super easy. And that's a critical thing because that's how the results of the census uh, determine the, um, you know, the, the funds and the allocation of money and services to your community. Yeah. And um, it's also how voting districts get redrawn every 10 years. So yeah. they have to be accurate and reflect who's actually in the community. Um, and another tactic is the thing called gerrymandering where, you know, things are, you know, uh, drawn um, unethically to, to, to sway the vote. So we have to put a stop to that as well. Um, there's a, actually a great organization called Ballot Ready, which if you have questions about where to vote or how to vote, in particular voting by mail, which I think is mm. going to be so important for, wait, somebody said their sister refuses to do the census. That's not okay. Tell her that Tony and Carrie said she has to do her. Census. Yeah, have her call us. So Ballot Ready is a great place to go to figure out how to vote by mail um, because oh, cool. this COVID time that is hugely, hugely important. So we're almost at 5,000. I think we should chat with each other. Oh, we're at 5,000. I was going to say wow. other until we get to 5,000, but we're at 5,000. Oh my gosh. Thank you everybody for showing. up this is amazing this is so 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 great um somebody asked how often do we text or call or contact um probably not as often as we should but when you're you know when your kids are grown up like tony's kids you get to like organize your photos when your kids are my kids age <laughs> in covid you don't get to do anything but take care of your kids and occasionally do an instagram live when your husband is kind enough to be with you <laughs> <laughs> that um, is so true. Yeah. This is the good for like 20 years. I had no time to do anything. Like I still don't get it done. But you know, at least I can wake up in the morning and go if I wanted to today, I could <laughs> organize my photos. But maybe I'll just, you know, have another cup of coffee. Are you learning a language or anything during COVID? <laughs> I wish I could say that I was. Yeah. You know, what's weird. I do seem to be bizarrely busy. I don't, you know, there's a lot to do. There is um, I, uh, but no, maybe, hopefully I won't have time to learn a language now or learn to play classical piano, but I have been doing yoga, so that's good. And you're so good at it. I have to say, I was, I was kind of impressed with your, with your yoga moves, sir. Oh, can you hear me? I thought you were so shocked that I said something nice to you for one. <laughs> I can hear you. I can't hear you. It's because I said something nice, so now it doesn't work anymore. All right. Well, I guess we should go. Should we go? Is this your way of trying to go? Joshua Molina's here. Joshua Molina? That's amazing. Okay. All right. I love you. See you later. Venice in California, Venice in California, called California, called Love California, called Love Yoga, called Love Yoga, called Love Yoga. Um, and they're doing streaming classes and it's only six bucks a class, I think. Um, there's a, a great one, teachers that I uh, go to in New York, um, uh, uh, called uh, Z Yoga, which you can find that I'll do streaming classes.